lift himself by his own bootstraps. And it's a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. I'm saying that the nation of, of Islam should evolve into what we call the reality's temple of America. Peace and positive energy, brother. All right, all right. How you doing there? <clears throat> Can you Peace hear me? Peace and positive energy, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We hear you loud and clear out there in YouTube land. Sure do. Yes, sir. Sorry I came up. I'm actually uh, in my garage in the car. Yeah, it's a little too noisy inside the house. Okay, so it'd be it would have been dark anyway. Okay, it's all right. It's all right. Peace forever and always, everybody. And of course, welcome to another spontaneous broadcast of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm the Mighty One, and you're Snub Number Seven. And uh, we have a very interesting topic here tonight. This spontaneous broadcast. And we got a special guest here. I've been listening to this brother for a little while. And he's gonna bring to us a little a little common sense. And I think that we should get along real, real well. <laughs> Cause that's that's what this platform is about. Common sense. Common sense. And uh, it's another brother that we was introduced to earlier. Uh, we did an interview with uh, I don't know if you saw that interview, uh, common sense. Uh, with our brother, the Myth Detector, and uh, yes, sir. yeah, and he uh, he's about exposing the myths, myths from reality, myths from fantasy and fiction. So that's what all of us should get along very, very well, very, very well, up in this joint. So again, brother, I would like to welcome uh, you to this platform for the very first time. And I'm uh, looking forward to your commentary and your opinion about this particular subject. We want to welcome to the uh, the platform our brother, It's Common Sense. Is, is that what you want to be known as, brother? It's Common Sense? Yes, I, I, because that's my channel. My actual name is Talib Yusuf Razi. Okay. So I just go by the channel, uh, It's Common Sense. That's what I try to use as much as possible. Okay. I'm still learning. Well, that's fine. It's common sense. Would you like to to to, to, to introduce yourself to to the uh, the audience? Give us a little background and why you came to YouTube and why 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 it's all about common sense. Could could you could you elaborate on that just a little bit, a little taste? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for uh, allowing me on your platform. I actually been listening to you for a long time. Uh, I say as long as since two thousand and eight. Wow. Uh my first yeah, my first YouTube page uh my first YouTube page was called Thinking Out Loud. Mm -hmm. And uh I used to, you know, uh to get further into the story, I I cut it short. Uh, just take your I time, bro. You know, just the nation. Yeah. Okay. 
I actually joined the Nation of Islam around 2000 and I want to say 2007. I wrote my letter and recited it in around 2007. But I was I came into contact with the teachings of Elijah Muhammad through, through a brother named Khalid Abdul Muhammad, Doctor Khalid. Okay. Uh, this was around 98, 99. Uh, at the time, uh, I was in a in a foster home, and it was actually a brother who introduced me to Khalid. And uh, this he was in I think I believe he was in the Black Panthers at this time. Okay. But. He used, to, he used to wear the suits and the bow ties, and I'm like, he used to say salam alaikum, but, you know, I got into the teachers, and I liked the way he taught it, and it was something I felt that was necessary at the time that the community needed. We needed strong black men. We needed men to stand up and protect the community, protect our women, uh, because I grew up in the, in, in the, on the south side of Chicago, and, uh, you know, I grew up in violence. I grew up in chaos and confusion. Yes, sir. But a part of me always knew all it was something that I I've always known, maybe through interactions of indirectly or directly of me not paying attention, or I was paying attention at the time. I knew this wasn't how our community was supposed to be, and so that's what made me uh, put a stronghold around what Khalid Muhammad was singing, and. Uh, Later on, you know, I, I still, you know, hard-headed as always. I didn't really pay attention to all the things I was supposed to, but it was things that was that should have been basic understanding. And uh, that's what attracted me to the Nation of Islam. So it wasn't until um, around 2007, like I said, because I had been going back and forth to different temples. I, I know you're familiar with a brother by Minister John Muhammad who passed uh, maybe like 10 years ago or so. 10 or 12 years. He was a minister of temple number two on the south side of Chicago. And I had been visiting his temple mm -hmm. and it was a very small temple, but there was dedicated brothers. And so uh, I actually didn't join his temple. I actually went to the Nation of Islam right off of 79th and Stony Island because I got caught into the glamour. I got caught into, you know, the numbers. Yes. And, you know, people, uh, the way they moved, the way they was militant, the way they moved as a whole and and I was attracted, instead of me being attracted to the knowledge, I began to uh, worship and idolize the characters and what the people had shown me. But I wasn't just one of those brothers that didn't read. I, I actually liked to read. And, uh, you know, I would read Birth of a Savior, Message to the Black Man, Our Savior Has Arrived, How to Eat to Live. Uh, the Fall of America. Mm -hmm. I listened to the tapes. I, I bought the, the DVDs of the Theology of Time and stuff like that. Yes, and sir. I was an admin reader. And it, and it wasn't that I just was so gun ho on the teachings. I love knowledge. Yes. And so I, I, I also read John Henry Clark, uh, Dr. Neely Fuller Jr., Francis Quest Wesley, Shazar Ali, uh, Henry Ford. I read a lot of the, the the destruction of the black civilization, the black men of the Nile. So it was kind of it was it was kind of smoky when it came to the teachings, because on one end we was dealing with spirituality, but on the other end there was reality. Yes, you sir. know, and you you uh you very familiar with the teachings. So what they used to tell us, they used to say everything's real, brother. Uh huh. And so a lot of times I couldn't get into the speeches that the minister Farrakhan was given because I hated to see it at the time. It was it was the action didn't match the words. Uh -oh. And so I was kind of disgruntled about that. But, you know, you always got that one brother, high spirit, dedicated FOI soldier. He, you know, he used to tell me his name was Brandon Muhammad. He used to say, brother, just give it time. See, when we get knowledge, we'd be so quick to speak and we're still babies. You got to listen to the message. And bringing it up to a little speed, I'll never forget. Uh, I kind of like, you know, was like, this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And so I start to venture into YouTube. And uh, I remember I ran across one of your videos and you were speaking about a relative and how they was dedicated and put in work and the, 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 the man didn't even 
didn't sh give him a proper funeral. Exactly. Or didn't make himself known as a, as a soldier in the FOI. And I remember when you said that, and it was just, you know, like how you participated in the nation. We always saw little things that didn't add up. Yes. We always saw, you know, contrary conversations and, you know, hey, we building a nation, but we it's 40 years later, we're still selling bean pies on the <laughs> corner. Why haven't we opened a store? Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was those little things. So I started, you know, at first I said, man, this brother angry. But I was, I've always had a listening ear. I always tried to not judge people on where they was right now, but listen so that I can hear the story. Because nobody wakes up angry. Yeah. You might wake up angry on Monday, but you probably been mad since Thursday. Mm -hmm. Monday, just when you decided to speak and act upon it. And so when it came to the teachings, what you were saying was it's common sense. If if I if if I donate a okay, cause you remember we had classes on Wednesday, yeah. classes on Friday, and classes on Sunday. So if I'm donating fifty dollars on Wednesday and Friday, and then on Sunday I'm donating a hundred dollars, that's two hundred dollars a week. Now there's over fifteen hundred of us participating actively in that temple. Why can't we open a grocery store? Why can't we start a business to start giving giving brothers jobs? A lot of us had to go outside of the nation if we wanted to make money to provide uh, the basic necessities of life, which they taught us was food, clothing, and shelter. Yes. But here we were building a nation, but we was we was we was dependent. We was at the mercy of the very enemy we called the devil, and that didn't make any sense to me. That was confusion. And so that's all. Uh, at the time, I, I I understand not everything you were saying. Yes. But I didn't need to understand everything you said. All I needed to understand the, the, the common sense ground of it. We can unite on common sense. Mm -hmm. Just like the just like the Americans don't agree with what China's doing and don't do what China do. But when you open your cabinet, you still see things that say made in China. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? So we can come to a common ground and come to a common agreement if it makes sense, if it's constructive. Mm -hmm. But when I was in the nation, I wasn't seeing it. So I you know, I, I think it was around maybe 2000. I got out early. Yeah. Because you don't have to keep slapping me in my face. You know, after a while, I can't blame the nation. I can blame myself for staying in the situation. Yes. And so I... I, I faded away from the nation. I kind of went, you know, because when you get out, you got the information. You know, once your eyes are open, then you can't go back to sleep. So, you know, I went to Temple Number Two with Minister John Muhammad, and then over there was less numbers, less activity, but the mindset was still the same. Mm -hmm. it, it, it went from building, me feeling like I was a part of building a nation and helping my people to rise up and to put them, put ourselves in the position. To where we can maintain ourselves to just going to church. <laughs> exactly. But we spoke, we we spoke against things like that. We we talked about the Christian, we talked about the Baptist, we talked about the Catholic. But the Christians and the Baptists had food drives, clothing drives, backpacks. They was clearing up people records. Yeah. They was helping people get homes. Yeah. They had prison reform. Yeah. Now, now here we are with su with supreme wisdom. We supposed to be the cream of the crop, the, the, the cream of the universe, the gods of the planet. We are the order. We the original man. And we can't even open a store to say and sell a very, very bean pies that we make ourselves. Mm. We didn't we didn't even we didn't even make our own uniforms. When I got my FOI uniform, I was given a piece of paper mm -hmm. to go place the order on the on the north side of Chicago. At a uniform company that was ran by a Jewish white man. Huh. So here I am, a fruit of Islam, getting my uniform that I'm supposed to be soldiering from black people, from white people. Yes. And that did that that did that wasn't reality. So then I begin to think to myself, hey man, we just playing dress up. Mm. We we just we just playing a role. We're we're, we're trapped on the stage. 
and we're in the character. But if we're not being sufficient and effective in the nine areas of act of human activity. Mm, nearly full of junior. Even if when that when that yes, sir, when that <laughs> when that when that FOI dies, when the FOI dies, he's not buried in a nation of Islam cemetery. Nope. He's buried in a Christian men, uh uh cemetery. And what does the Quran say? We don't even want to be buried next to a non-believer. Mm. So when I was watching, I would watch sub to your channel. You probably just don't remember me because I've had a couple of uh, channels. Like I said, the first one was thinking out loud. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of got frustrated with how things was going. My mind was, I was confused now because here I am, the dedicated my mind and my soul to a teaching. What I thought I dedicated to a teaching, but I actually dedicated it to a personality. Exactly. So when the personality didn't fit the narrative, I threw the whole thing away. I had to start over. And so that's when I uh my next channel was called The Shadows of Truth. Mm. And by that time, you know, I, I wandered through the wilderness. I still needed knowledge. I still needed structure. I still needed to brown, be around people that could see the world for what it is and us not be trapped and lost inside of this prison that they done put us in mentally. Yes. Never leaving the plantation. Still being able to party and have a good time. Well, they did that on the plantation. They prayed for it. Mm. They prayed that master had a good time on the weekend. Yeah. So that they can have fun on the weekend. That's why we say to this day, thank God for Friday. <laughs> so I would watch your channel off and on when I was on YouTube. And I said, man, I like the fact that you called it the reality temple on earth because we don't live in reality. Yes, sir. We live inside our imagination and we don't we don't see when we get trapped inside our imagination. And so around that time, that's when I started uh I started interacting with the the RBGs and what you call quote unquote the black conscious community <laughs> like the Sinettas and right. the uh the the polites and stuff like that. And so then when I would see them talk, yeah they had knowledge and they said big words, <laughs> but the actions match the actions match the same thing that I tried to escape when I joined the nation of Islam. It was just people dressed differently. Mm. They still excuse my language, they still use vulgar language mm -hmm. language. They were still smoking, mm -hmm. still drinking, still creating single mothers. Yes. They were still they was doing the same thing that street people was doing, that gangbangers was doing. They just had information. They they it was the it was the old syndrome of yeah that's a dope boy in the community. Yeah, he sell drugs in the community, but he pass out turkeys every Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we were substituting one act for 300 mistakes, and that wasn't that didn't make any sense. So then that's when I came back on the YouTube, and my channel became It's Common Sense, and I began to point out the things that those guys was doing on their channel. Not to criticize them, or not to talk down on them, but to judge them. I was judging them based on their actions, because we all know black people, a lot of our black people, we say actions speak louder than words, but every time you get into a conversation or a disagreement with somebody, what do they always say? It's not what you said, it's how you said it. So they be focused on the words. So it's, it's the common sense in the conversations and the behaviors that we dispute. And once I start attacking like the Umar Johnson, mm -hmm. speaking on them, I say, I say attack because it's justifiable. You know, anytime you speak against something, it is an attack, but it's a healthy attack. We're yes. looking for constructive results. Exactly. And so and that's how my channel became. It's common sense. Uh, like I said, it was around 2008. I started listening to you and I remember you would point these things out about what what the nation was doing and what and, and how they went about with Malcolm and how they went about with Colin. And I was around when he when that man was hugging and kissing on Father Flavor. So mm -hmm. I knew you wasn't lying. I would see people in the comments say you a hater, you're crazy, <laughs> you this, you that. But I I was once that person. You couldn't tell me nothing about Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell me nothing about the, about the nation of Islam. You the lost one. We got the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self. So yes. I, understood, I understood where you was coming from and the attacks and how you was responding. 
you know. I even watched it, uh, not to bring up old things, but I remember when it was a situation going on with this sister. Yeah. And it became two sisters, but I remember <laughs> one of the sisters as a Muslim. You know yeah. what I mean? But exactly. I remember, she, she jumped, she always done that. She'd been jumping from platform to platform mm -hmm. way before she came and started interacting with you. So I already was ahead of that one. You know, so... That's how I became listening to you. It was back in 2008. It, you know, the universe is logic. Yes, sir. And, and it, everything is about time and energy. And reality is truth. And truth is what it is. That's just, that's the only definition we need. Truth is what it is. Untruth is what it is not. And what I saw, what I experienced, and what you said, that was truth there. Yes, sir. I'm not going to say it, there was, un, I want, I'm not going to say there was untruth there. Because you still got to share your experience. And that part we didn't experience. But we should have common sense mm. to hear truth when it's there. Yes, sir. You know. And so, yeah, brother, I've always, you know, I, like I said, I've seen you, you know, in that. It, it's been times where I say, man, brother, they... <laughs> They don't know what they're talking about. But then at the same time, that's that's justice. Yes, sir. Because if somebody attacked you and slandered your name, you're supposed to defend. You're supposed to defend your honor and defend your name. If if somebody's lying on you, you're obligated to tell the truth. So I didn't take it as, you know, you was spazzing out and, you know, <laughs> dropping eight bombs and killing kids, women, and children. You, anybody, anybody that believed it, because, see, that's the thing about a lot. It's poison. Yeah, and if you don't stop it, it spreads, and it ultimately causes destruction. So I, I understood. I, it was just sometimes I'd be like, brother, you know what? Just let it go. But yeah. at the same time, truth be told, as long as somebody lying on you, you got to tell the truth because they're gonna lie to somebody new. So you got to tell the truth all over again. And it's an old saying. Uh, People don't like to believe the, believe the truth when the lie is more entertaining. Exactly. You know. Exactly. I'm enjoying the conversation, bro. You can just keep rolling. You know, <laughs> I'm enjoying the conversation. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, because you know, I, I listen to your videos also, and I, I listen to your videos because it's common sense. And we learn from each other. You say yeah. things that I, I have no idea of. I I, I don't know. And see, that makes, listening to your videos make me stronger. Because I don't know. Yes, sir. And, and I haven't experienced what you experienced because, see, it took me, for you to be in the state of mind where you at right now, it took me, what, what, 25, 30 years? <laughs> it took me 25, now, but when I got it, I got it, you know? But it took me 25, yes, 30 years. Um... It was my, it was my relatives that really kept me in the nation of Islam as long as I did, cause they kept, just like you were saying earlier, you were saying, uh, brother, give it time. You know, they kept giving me this speech, give it time, and blah blah blah. You know, whatever. And you know, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try. And also, I wasn't raised in the nation of Islam, but I was, I was introduced to that when I was a little boy, and I always wanted to be part of that. It always looked great to me. It, it always, you know, coming from the Jim Crow South, you know, I heard these Muslims talking, you know, talking this tough stuff the way they did, you know, during, I mean, during the Jim Crow South in the early 70s, you talking, you know, the way that the Muslims was talking, I'm like, wow, you know, that was very attractive to me when I was a child. And my study of those teachings, reading those books and my relatives gave me the lessons too because they was in the nation of Islam. They knew I wanted to be part of it. I'm not supposed to have the lessons and you know all the stuff that members have, but they were sending me those things. So I was I was into the lessons and I was reading those books and here I am, a child, what, eight years old, nine years old. I was having big big time conversations with adults. I'm like, I felt like I was uh, the black uh, Einstein or somebody, and you know I was just. You know, talking yes, to sir. these preachers and teachers. My teachers, I was a little boy. And my teachers was actually listening to me, you know, in classes. I was bringing things to my class that nobody never heard before because those teachings 
Just like Malcolm X, those teachings caused you to start searching for knowledge, searching for these different sources, even outside of the of the teaching. So I was up on so many things, you know. It, it, it just made me, you know, I was a little boy, it blew my mind. But also at the same time, as I grew older and began to mature, I started to see certain things. You know, you don't see things, you look at things differently as you grow into yourself, as you mature. You don't think the same way you did when you was eight years old. As you start growing, growing up, things, things become different. And just like you said, um, I was attracted to the numbers too. That's another reason why I didn't really want to leave because it was it was exciting. Because I would go, I went all over the country with Minister Farrakhan every chance that we got, all up and down the the, the East Coast and as far I didn't go out to California with him, but the Midwest and down south and thousands and hundreds of thousands. Now I was with Minister Farrakhan. When he only had 30 people come out to see him. Now that's when I joined. You know, it was like 30. Because I know in Hartford, Connecticut, it was only 30 people. Maybe even less. But he would teach like it was hundreds and hundreds of people. So I was with, I was with Minister Farrakhan when he was wearing the same old shoes, same old dirty shoes. That's when I was with Minister Farrakhan. And myself and Brother Frank, I was in the St. Louis Temple at the time. Myself and Brother Frank, Brother Frank was the official mechanic for Minister Farrakhan, and I would, I would roll with Minister, I mean, Brother Frank to Chicago to keep his cars, because I think he had a limousine and a Cadillac, not a limousine, uh, a Cadillac and a, mm -hmm. he had a Cadillac and a, uh, Cadillac and a Lincoln, I believe. Anyway, Brother Frank kept those, Brother Frank was a bad boy under the hood. Let me tell you, Brother Frank, we went to the junkyard. And got a, a old car out the junkyard for a hundred, a hundred bucks or so. We brought that back to the temple. I'm looking at this piece of junk. What the hell are you gonna get this piece of mess for? You talk about the rise of Jesus in three days on the third day <laughs> in that garage. And that was the that was the first car I ever really drove. It was that little car that we got from the junkyard. We got it from the junk, straight from the yeah. junkyard. And Brother Frank, I don't know, I don't know whether he couldn't afford it or just didn't want to do it because he found this man bit spoons and knives and forks and stuff and used a welding torch to, to make parts that, that he didn't have. You look under the hood, you think you're getting ready to go to breakfast. Like, what these knives and forks? What the hell you done did, man? Brother Frank was a bad man. He's probably passed by now because he was an older brother, you know, when I was a young man. But he was, he was, brother, common sense, it's so many, you know, it's so many, it was so many talented brothers in the nation. I mean, they had skills, electricians, they could lay down carpet, they could build buildings, they could rehab. I'm like, why Farrakhan couldn't take advantage of all these, these people? We had chefs. We had all the brothers. I'm the only one that didn't have no uh, skills. <laughs> I didn't have no skills. But these brothers had all kinds of skills. Why are we in the condition that we're in here with all these brothers with all these skills? Well, basically it was because it was all about Farrakhan. Trying to make him look good. You know, we would raise money. And all our money, the majority of our money, always go to temple number two. I'm like... What about us? I don't live in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago look good, but what about us? Because I'm, I'm in the street selling final calls, talking to the people, talking about what I'm going to do in East St. Louis, Illinois. And all the money, all the funding is going to Chicago. So what are we going to do here in, 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 in East St. Louis? You know, I, I just couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't get with that. Uh, like, I, like you said earlier, the numbers got to me. Because it was exciting, you know, having all these people come to see. And at that time, in the 80s, we really had it going on. The people really was attracted to the nation, you know, the, the rebuilding process. They loved to see the brothers. We was out there with the final call. We was doing our thing. The, the people really was responding to us out there on the streets. I enjoyed that. I liked that. I, I, I actually enjoyed my time, really. 
in the nation of us. I love being out there talking to the people. I love selling the bean pie. I love shaking the hands. I love being, I even like the people that slam the door in my face. <laughs> I, I even like them too. That's right. <laughs> I did. I like them too. I would, they would treat me like the Jehovah Witness. Cause you know, you see the Jehovah Witness come down the street, you lock your doors, close the, <laughs> you don't want to be bothered with the Jehovah Witness. They would do that to me too. But yes, I had sir. I had more people that would respond to me more so than you know close the door. There was a good camaraderie in the in the eighties, and at that time, I would assume that the government probably would see Louis Farrakhan as a threat because we really was we had it going on. We we raised the nation. We raised two million two point I think it was two point four two point three million dollars in two months for Minister Farrakhan. Mm. We were some, we were some bad. No social media at all. There was no social media. There was no cash out. The, this was just shaking hands, going out, asking boots people on for the, the yeah boots on the ground. And that's all I ever known. You know all this internet stuff. I, I, you know I can't get with it like that. And I tell people all the time, if you was around talking the way you do with your the way that you behave in my day, somebody gonna put a bullet in your brain. Because you can't go out on the streets and talk the way some of these people talk to folks out on the streets. So apparently, I didn't get a bullet in the brain. So apparently, I was doing something right. Because I don't talk the same way I talk on the street or on this video. That's the same way I talk in the streets. I don't try to disrespect nobody. I, I, I talk civil with folks or whatever. You know, so I'm doing the same thing. I haven't changed nothing at all. So... Yes, sir. See, sometimes it's best, and even in a nation, because you you've been in a nation. So, really, actually, in the nation, you really required to direct people toward the meeting. You're not really supposed to be trying to teach the people. The teachers are the ministers. Those are the ones right. who are the official teachers. So, and some of us aren't even qualified because it's one thing to hear a teaching, but to try to explain it to somebody else. You, you, it might not go. It's just like trying to tell a joke you heard from a comedian. You said that's funny, but then you try to tell the joke. I said, man, that ain't funny. Where you get that from? <laughs> you know, because you didn't, you didn't, you didn't tell right. the, you know, you didn't, you not, you don't know how to tell the joke the way Eddie Murphy or Eddie Griffin or whoever. You know, you didn't. You, we we're not comedians like that. So I understand everything that you're talking about. Uh, let me let me let brother Talib on here. We got we got brother brother Talib in the house. Brother yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, we just we just uh, going over brother common sense used to be a, in the nation of Islam. Okay. And so we were just you know going going back and forth talking about our experience with that and but the subject that we chosen for tonight is why religion spirituality. And black scholarship must be exposed and challenged. That's that's what I want to talk about tonight. But that's what we was talking about right now. And uh, if you get a chance, brother Common Sense, put your put your um, the link to your channel so everybody could could just subscribe to your channel. Subscribe to uh, it's Common Sense if you get a chance. Or if somebody in the chat room, you can look up that brothers. Uh, channel put in the chat room so folks can I want everybody to subscribe to that brother. It's common sense. Isn't this the same brother that you had on your uh, other live uh, panel one time? No, that brother interviewed us about a week or so ago. I think oh. he was he's yeah. he's called he's called the myth detector. Yeah, the myth detector. I heard he said he was in the nation for a minute. Then. Yeah, he did say that he was uh yeah, he was actually in the study classes and everything. Okay. All right. But I want to say this before we really get into our topic here. See, the thing about the Nation of Islam and what folks don't really understand. For me, when you join these organizations or or a church or anything like that, to me, it's an investment. And I want to get paid on my investment. I'm an investing in God. So, because 
You're going to church because God is making promises to us. God is saying, if you do this, if you obey my commandments, or the nation of Islam say, if you obey and want to follow Elijah Muhammad, because in the nation of Islam, they tell you. You know, if you follow Elijah Muhammad, you get what, uh, I forgot exactly how it goes, but you know, uh, friendships and all walks of life, money and all that kind of good stuff. This is what they promise you if you follow Elijah Muhammad's teaching. And if you go to church, they promise that you go, you can go to heaven and there's milk and honey in the sky and all this other. So it's an investment. Okay, so I'm invested. Or if you go to Wall Street and then you invest your money into Wall Street, you expect a payoff. So if I'm going to if I'm going to be live a righteous life, if I'm going to live to the principles of Allah or Jesus, or if I'm going to invest my money into the stock market, then I expect a payoff. I'm not just really doing this. You know, I should do it like in, in this situation. You really should be a righteous person because that's the, a better thing for you to do anyway. But these things that you're investing in and, they, and you taking my money, it's not like it's for free. You taking my money, you taking my time. So I expect a payoff. I expect... I expect some profit. All the profit is going to the leadership. My situation is not changing. I saw Minister Farrakhan going from a broke down Cadillac. Now he riding around in limousine and staying in high five star hotels. My situation is not changing. And I start to see a pro as I got older, all that hype and all the thousands of people Listening to you and uh, coming to the meetings, uh, I don't care about that. Th that don't mean nothing when you broke. It's like these these stars, like my like my girls in Vogue that I always have. In Vogue had the fame, they did not have the fortune. That's why the other two ladies decided to quit because they love to sing, they love to entertain, but somebody else getting all the money, and they couldn't take it no more, and they left. Because I'm invested in it, in, into this. But other people are benefiting from my labor. I'm not doing that. That's pimp gang. That's what you do to the prostitutes on the street. Here I am, you a prostitute, and you giving your body to some stranger, to some sucker, and another person is benefiting from your activity, from your humiliation and degradation, more than you are. I can't do that. Can't do that. It's an investment. And see, this is what a lot of folks don't understand and don't want to understand because just like the brother was saying earlier, they get caught up in personality. I didn't know who Louis Farrakhan was. The only one I ever knew was Elijah Muhammad. So he, I didn't trip off of him. Matter of fact, when I first heard Minister Farrakhan, I thought he was a woman. I said, what woman is that? That's a woman preacher. And my relatives went crazy. That's Minister Farrakhan. That ain't no. Well, he sounded like a hard woman to me. To me, he sounded like a hard woman. They went ballistic. That's Minister Farrakhan. That ain't no one. I never was impressed with him. But he made a promise. That's why I joined his organization. He promised to bring back the original teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He lied. That's why I stay on his neck. Because you're a liar. And that's what he promised everybody that was joining. I'm bringing back. The, because that was the problem with Wallace. Because as you know, Wallace took the people away from the original teaching. And guide the people towards Sunni Islam or wherever the hell it was. But Farrakhan stood up. I'm bringing back the original teaching. And he lied. In the beginning, you can see the beginning of the lie, he starts setting up himself as some kind of special person. In 1981, when he did Savior's Day, when he talked about Elijah Muhammad, it's still a lie. And Elijah Muhammad is going to take is taking the place of Master Farah Muhammad, and now he's taking the place of Elijah Muhammad. He did it very, very slowly. And the people accepted that. That's not the teachings. That's not the teachings at all. 
Elijah Muhammad said, after I'm gone, y'all on y'all own. Basically, that's what he was saying. After I'm gone, I'm the last. Y'all can't get it together. Too bad. You know, whatever whatever it will be, will be. There is no comforter like Elijah. Because, yeah, like I said, I've been in the, in the teachings a long time since I was a child. I never heard nowhere in the teachings where Elijah Muhammad talked about, after me, there's some kind of comforter. And he's going to come back. Matter of fact, Elijah Muhammad said, why you want to live forever anyway? He don't teach about, he didn't never taught that he was some kind of Christ. He never taught that. He said, when I'm gone. And not to. You go ahead, brother. Go ahead. I'm sorry, brother. Not to cut your wisdom. Yeah, go just ahead. Just to back you up on what you said. Yeah, go just ahead. Just to back you up on what you said. He actually, in theology of time, day two, he said, after me, there will be no more. Boom. What is it left to teach you? Boom. I brought you. Boom. That's it. Because there, there's nothing left to teach you. You're on your own. But see, Elijah Muhammad prophesied the fall of his organization because he knew those people still wasn't getting. They was, it, they had, it was a personality thing. They really wasn't into the teachings like that. So when he left, the body fall, like we was talking about, I believe, Soul Liberation Day. When the, the body, when the head dies, the body falls. And that's how it is with us. All our organizations been like that. When the head dies, the body falls. That's the way it was with the Black Panthers. That's the way it, it was with Yahweh being Yahweh. That's the way, well, all our organizations, Martin Luther King, when the head dies, the body falls. We should now be in a position and now we should be mature enough where we've learned our lessons because look at the United States government. How many, how many heads have died since George Washington? They have a different leader every four years. And even if something happened to the president, then the, the, the vice president steps up. Then the secretary of state, however they got it, the head never dies. It keeps rolling. We're not set up that way. Our leaders become dictators. It's me all the way. They don't set that up like that. You can take out almost all of Congress. It's not going to bother these folks because they have a system of stepping up. Us, our people, you get this head and that's the end. Like they don't know it all. What makes Farrakhan so special? He know all the teachings so great. And then on top of that, he's a hypocrite. You got brothers and sisters that never left the original teaching, but he know more than they do. And they never strayed away from the original teaching. This man, okay, first he was a Catholic. Then he went to the Nation of Islam. Then he went to Wallace. Then he went back out into the world. Came back talking about, I'm going to rebuild the Nation of Islam. Then he gonna go to Scientology. This is this confused ass person. This, this is who you following. Cause he can talk. So what? A lot of folks can talk. He's confused as hell. And everybody that's following him is confused. But in their minds, they are taught this supreme knowledge stuff. And that's that's fine in your house. But see, in 2023, 2024. This is the age of information. That don't work no more. People was talking about how Malcolm X had the teachings and nobody beat him during debates. That was during that time. If Malcolm brought that same stuff in 2023, Malcolm would get towed up. It's a whole different ball game. Because now you can go to the internet. You don't have to go to the library. You can go to the internet and get all kinds of basic information. People are thinking for themselves more in 2023. We're not as spooky as we was back in 1963, 1955, 1930, 1920, 1875. This is a whole different ballgame. All this religious, black scholarships, all of it's going to be questioned now. This is interrogation decade. And if you can't handle the question, you have to sit your ass down. Folks ain't into that no more. And the only reason why it's surviving the way it's doing now, simply because 
A lot of us, we was born into it. That's the reason why. All these things was taught to us. Because if it wasn't taught, we wouldn't even give a damn. We wouldn't give a damn about Islam. We wouldn't give a damn about Jesus. All these things is taught to us. We would just be out here living our lives. What are we going to eat for, for dinner? That's all. We wouldn't be tripping off all these different ideologies and whatever. All that stuff is man-made and taught. And usually it's, it's, it's man-made and it's taught for profit. Whoever started up is because I want to control you. I want to rule you. I want to exploit you. I want to make money off of you. And that's all that I see in, in all of it is exploitation. I haven't seen none of it that's beneficial to us. And that's why I had to get the help out of all of it. And unfortunately, unlike you, Brother Common Sense, it took incarceration to open up my eye. Because actually the incarceration put off because I was spiritual. When I got locked up, I was spiritual. I was religious. I was black conscious. I was all that stuff when I got locked up. I thought I was really smart and intelligent because I had read all these books and got all this knowledge. It didn't mean a damn thing. None of it. Didn't do. Matter of fact, they looked at me because uh, I was in a, a mental institution. It made me look more insane. I'm running around here quoting the Bible and the Quran. They're like, this guy crazy. This guy crazy. <laughs> he crazy. <laughs> And God is going to do this and punish you for what y'all doing to me. I'm preaching to them. They're like, this dude crazy. <laughs> you know, Brother Common says, Brother Talib, I go back and think about how yeah. my behavior. Yes, <laughs> you know, I go back and think about my behavior back then. I'm like, damn, I was looking crazy. <laughs> but you know what? You know what? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Brother Common says. That terminology. When we're on a righteous path, yeah. we just want to do the right thing. We want to eat healthy. Yeah. We want to exercise. We want to. We want to. We want to escape this hellish world that we've been born in, <clears throat> because we was forced, like you said, we wasn't born with religion. Yeah. These things was taught. We've been trained. We've been trained to entertain non-constructive things, and to look at constructive things as being boring. Yeah. Not exciting. So we ignore. So we ignore it. So. Yeah, they say it's a crazy institution, but that don't mean you're crazy. See, they look at you crazy because they love smoking. Yeah. They love drinking. They love partying and fornicating and not doing the, doing their due diligence to do the right thing. But yet they, they will tell you they believe in God. Exactly. They will tell you that Jesus is their savior. But they're, they say in one thing and doing another thing. Because they've been trained to think like that. So it's, it's, it's just like how you were saying earlier. When we came into the nation of Islam or anybody that's a part of an organization like Yahweh being Yahweh, uh, the, comedic, the comedic nation with uh, Malachi Z. York, those people began to eat different, dress different, talk different. It was brother this, sister this. Yeah. You, you told the truth. You spoke with honesty. That was a respect. I can trust my wife around my brother. Exactly. So those things is weird to people. Those things are weird to people who don't practice those things. You, like if, when, you, when you speak up and you say, we crazy as hell. We, the white man do everything for us. We don't do nothing for ourselves. See, we'll see a, a millionaire or a billionaire that the, that the system has allowed to be, be in that position and still don't see that we're not free. Right. Kanye West proved that. Mm -hmm. He was a billionaire, but when, but when he said something that them, them Europeans didn't like, he was not a billionaire the next day. <laughs> so he still wasn't in control. He wasn't in control of anything. And so when they see a person like you or Brother Talib or, or, or your listening audience, doing the right thing, trying to be righteous, because in, in, in the teachers, they tell us we, we're we trying to stand upright. We're striving to right. be upright, standing on per standing perpendicular on our square. That don't mean we won't fall. We won't make mistakes. We won't use the same, the wrong terminology or, or get weak. But it's not about when you fall. It's about when you get up. Because if you, if you see somebody fall and they just lay there, you're going to be like, what the hell wrong with them? That seems crazy. Mm -hmm. Other than a person falling and jumping right back up. 
So we we not we not trained to do that. And like how you how you were saying, brother, like we we're trained to worship the speaker mm -hmm. and not the knowledge. Exactly. See, because if see if if we was if we was trained to learn the knowledge, the speaker wouldn't have that much value because what he's teaching you, you know the same thing he know. Exactly. The only difference is between y'all don't know the same people. But it's not about the people, it's about the knowledge. And like how you were saying earlier, that's why when Elijah left, it was easy for a Marvin Muhammad to come in mm -hmm. to say he is God. Right. And he chose Elijah Muhammad. It's easy because people are still seeking. It was easy for Jim Jones right. to talk about people over there. Right. It's 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 easy because well, people once you wake up, brother, you can't go back to sleep. That's the that's the number one rule. Yes. See, once you see, you can't unsee what you've already seen. And and trying to pretend like you don't see it is gonna drive you more crazy than a person that don't see it all. That's why the, the Adam Elijah Muhammad said a hypocrite is worse than a disbeliever because mm. they don't believe. Mm -hmm. But a hypocrite believed that then didn't believe and then believed again. You can't trust a man like that. Because he's neither here nor there. He has no loyalty. Mm. And so, yeah, no, it, 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 people people call people call me crazy when I stop eating pork. What the hell wrong with you? <laughs> We've been eating pork all our lives. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with pork? Hell, I was believing in Santa Claus when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But until I realized we didn't even have a damn channel <laughs> for Santa Claus to come through. So it, it becomes common. Some things is... You, you get away from the ignorance and the non-constructive thinking and non-constructive behavior. And when you're being constructive, when you're doing opposite of what the system wants you to do or what the system trains you to do, then it, it becomes that plantation mentality. It, it's just like on, if, when you watch old movies and you see there's a person that want to leave the plantation. And then all the other people, they want to leave too, but they ain't got the courage. Right. And then one of them will betray you. They'll turn on you. It's that it's the we we still have that mentality, like how you were saying how Minister Farrakhan he was a Catholic first, right? Exactly. And we can see him implementing them same Catholic values. That's why they call her Mother Teresa mm. or Mother such and such. Mm -hmm. That's Catholic uh, teachings. Mm -hmm. you, you you're bringing you're slowly bringing that stuff in. You're rocking the people back to sleep, but you're covering it up. You 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 you're mixing truth with falsehood. It's like when the when Elijah Muhammad said, you can put clean water in a dirty glass, it'll look clean, but it's still dirty in there. Mm -hmm. You got to clean the glass out first. And so when you begin to clean your glass out, and there's other people that's used to, when they thirsty, they don't care what they drink. That's when <laughs> people say, I don't even like water. Right. And they need water to survive. Exactly. So you're going to always sound, you're going to always sound crazy to a person that don't want to come out of, off that stage. They don't want to come out of that arrested development. Woo! All right. I love this. Love this conversation. What you put a one in the chat room. You love, you love what you hear. Put a one in the chat room. I, I'm loving. It. I don't even want to say nothing. I want the brother. I want I want some common sense teachings tonight. I don't even really want to say nothing. Matter of fact, I'm not really gonna say nothing. I'm gonna sit back, put my little two cents in. I'm going to sit back here and just soak up everything. Because I, I I need somebody to listen to. It's a damn shame. I let go of all these people on YouTube. I really don't even have nobody to listen to. I listen to you. I listen to the Myth Detector. And I listen to Brother Khalil. And I dropped all those other suckers because they ain't talking about nothing. They've been saying the same thing. And they ain't changed nothing. And they even they taking in millions and millions of thousands of dollars or whatever. They ain't changing nothing. I don't want to listen to that, that stuff. The same old stuff. They was talking about the same thing they was doing uh, last year. They done this year, which is nothing. They're going to do the same nothing they did this year, next year, right around the corner. Ain't nothing changed about that. So I don't, I don't, I don't I need somebody to listen to. I'm glad that I discovered your channel again, brother. We got ones in the chat room. Ones in the chat room. They love what they're hearing, brother. Common sense. They love what they're hearing. Yes, I'm, sir. Well, we, yeah, go ahead, brother. Well, we go shop ahead. at each other. We shop at each other. Yes, sir. I, I'm 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 similar to you, brother. I don't. <laughs> I'm probably maybe subscribed to twelve or thirteen channels. Yeah. But it's 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 the people that I listen to. It's not just complaints. They have solutions. Mm -hmm. 
It's about the change. You say, hey, if we can't complain about the a system, but yet we enjoy the spoils of the system. Mm. We don't understand. We 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 enjoy being a prisoner. See, huh. we we get it confused. We we still under the neck of the system, and so us being involved in the system, we all prisoners. It's just that some prisoners have more than other prisoners. I'm exactly. pretty sure you've seen videos where there's brothers they in prison. They got all the common syrup, right. noodles, snack. They got they wearing watches. They got phones. They you know they got gold teeth and chains, but they still in the prison. Somebody still tell them, hey. Lockdown, go to your cell. That's right. No more interaction. That's right. So it, it's the same. It's the same way. It's just that that's a that's a greater confined space. But we still prisoners. Right now, if the if the system if, if white people decide right now, hey, we going up on the water. You know you need water to survive. Don't nobody that we consider leader. And that's another thing. These people are not leaders. They're spokesmen. Right. They're just speaking. They're, they're talking about the problem. There's no solutions. They're not being example examples. And I know one of the topics was religion. And I and and I learned this from the the, the Dr. Nelly Fuller Jr. The greatest religion on planet Earth is the system of white supremacy. Mm. And why do I say that? Because religion is what a belief based on action. There's a group of people that believe that as if you're this complexion, if you're color. You supposed to be like this. If you not that color, we tell you what to do. You don't tell us what to do. Now, do they not do they back that up by action? Look around in our community. Look around. Look, look who pays us. It doesn't matter if you're a billionaire, who you got to go get the money from. Exactly. When it comes to education, you when, when you get your degrees and your doctrines and stuff like that, if they don't step their name on it, it don't mean nothing. It's just a piece of paper. That's right. They they control it. And so when 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 me, you and the brother Talib, when we get on here, just to let you know, brother, my name is Talib, too. It's just spelled with one I, T A L I B. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, OK. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, so when 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 you when you see the system, you that came through the nation, you read books, you see it. It's, it you see what's going on. You ain't gonna have a lot of followers about that. Yeah. Not not turn around and do your channel and talk about celebrities all day. Mm -hmm. Talk about bad relationships. Talk about talk about the violence in our community. Just just talk about that. I guarantee you, your channel will shoot to hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. Cause we love drama. We love non-constructive things. So when you come talking constructive, they gonna say, brother, I don't want to hear that. Cause our people that we're not used to that. We grew up in, in our community. Look at our community. When, when I was little, I, I used to see, I always used this example when I talk to people. Like when you listen to a black person's conversation, they loud. Mother F this and F that and MF for this and that B bad not and I'm going to show him and next time I'm going to kill him or they turn huh. the phone with their little friends. They ain't, they ain't talking nothing constructive. What they talking about? Like you, you talk to Susie? No, I ain't to Susie. She don't mess with me no more. I think we done fell out. She over there with that man now. Ain't talking about nothing. Whole time, they raising your water, your <laughs> light, your electricity. Mm -hmm. The food is going up. They yeah. going off the planet. Yeah. There, it's a war going on right now. They taking your tax dollars to fund another war that for people that look like them yeah. against people that have share your same complexion, different culture. So, here, so, yeah, you're going to be crazy when you try to point that out. Matter of fact, they're going to call you a Tom. They're going to call you a mm. Coon. They're mm -hmm. going to call you an agent. But the people but the people that's supposed to be the black militants, and some of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, they ain't fighting white people. No. Nope. If you're the military, if you're the black militants, where's the shooting at? Because <laughs> the, the, uh, the police department and the army is the militant for the system. And they'll shoot you in a second. Sure will. They don't hesitate. We'll fight you. It's a it's a person right now. If you start talking about Farrakhan, that man that man will say, I'm a, I'm coming to your state next month. I'll be in your town next month. Say it again. See if you say that to my Mohammed. <laughs> 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 they'll come, they'll threaten your life. Now, sure now here's now, now here's here's the system. The system will kill one of theirs 
and they'll what you what they'll say. Hands up, don't shoot, no justice, no peace. <laughs> right. Minister Farrakhan came ahead of Savior's Day that was called Justice or Else. else. Mm -hmm. It's 2023, brother. Where's the or else? We still ain't seen the or else. And he didn't really explain what the or else supposed to be. <laughs> Because he, that's all he, that's all he's ever done. He's just, he just warns. It's always a warning. Mm -hmm. at, at the, at they thought the nation of Islam, and there's some good brothers and sisters in the nation yes, of Islam. It sure is. But they're just being led astray. They're, they're, they're being placed at a standstill, and that's by design. That's by design. And he, and and the minister, don't the minister is not crazy, and the minister is not stupid. He just carefully chooses his words. He just more articulate, like you said. There's other ministers that know the same thing he knows. Yes. But because he was in front for so long and he was the representation of the teachings, that's why he can take that one sentence off the theology of time when the honorable Elijah Muhammad said, when you wherever you see this brother, you go. Wherever yeah. you hear this. Brother, speak. You listen. Mm -hmm. Now that could have been anybody that was that was following the teachers and writing exact. He was just saying that that man was an example of a good Muslim, of a good follower. But like you said, in the nation of Islam, even in my time of joining, there was brothers that knew how to farm. Yeah. There was brothers who knew how to raise. That knew how to cattle. Yeah. That could build roads. That could build structures. Yeah. That can pipe fit, pipe lay. They knew how to put in electricity. They yeah. know how to locate wells. Yeah. They knew how to do all of that stuff. I'm in Chicago, brother. Mm. I when you was when you were speaking, you like how you said you only knew Elijah Muhammad. Well, I can remember a time where that design was being put into play until it, fu it fulfilled itself. They used to have a bookstore on 79th, <clears throat> east of uh east of Halston. It was called uh your your bookstore and all you can go in there you can find all elijah muhammad's books table talks supreme wisdoms his lectures his savior's day little by little it became farrakhan <laughs> until when you came into the bookstore one day elijah muhammad's stuff was just in the corner mm. and everything else was farrakhan but in 2023 that bookstore is closed mm. See the Salam restaurants. Hey, hey, hey. But when they shoot one of us, what's our response? Yes, sir. We call that the, the technical difficulties. We call that the usual suspects, brother. No, I, I put that up there. I'm having, for some reason, I'm having technical difficulties with my internet. I just want to let you know. That's the usual suspects, brother. They, they don't want to, they, 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 they cut me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, brother, we, uh, no, we shopping each other, brother. Yes, you know, sir. Like I, like how you were saying earlier, I, uh, I listen to you and anybody that's dealing with reality and dealing with logic and not only making suggestions, but giving solutions. Yes, sir. Because there are solutions. There are solutions when we try them, but until we attempt them, they just suggestions. Right. But they one in the same. So I'm like you, brother. I don't I don't listen to that. You know, we got to all go back to Africa. And, you know, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Exactly. Uh, I, I'm I'm not with the, co the comedic science and the voodoo and the religion and stuff like that. I'm looking at a religion that's backed up by action every day. And they tell us they they tell us when the light bill gonna be higher and <laughs> it's gonna be a sale at the grocery store. 
<laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> and, and brother, brother, yeah. your, your uh, brother, uh, common sense, you're uh, totally correct about that because um, around here where I live at in Nebraska, <laughs> The food prices is going up so high, I don't even, I rarely even look in the meat department anymore. <laughs> you, you, you know, I mean, man, it's just, it's just crazy, you know. And, and see, here's the thing. If we took control of the state like me and the brother been talking about for over the past uh, five years, you know, we could curtail that problem. You know, when it comes to doing for self, like the religious organizations, like the one I belong to under Malachi York and the one I was processing under with Farrakhan a few years ago, you know, we would have our own and we would be doing for self. But how can we be doing for self and we all scattered around, mm -hmm. still depending on these folks? <laughs> to give us our substance. You see what I'm saying? Well, we got to have a job or some type of government aid or benefit just to live off of. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. That's not doing for self. So, I mean, and like you, I heard you mentioning about uh, how they got apartments, but they not renting them out to believers. Huh. I mean, hey, you got brothers that follow them, that claim them teachers in the penitentiary. When they get out, where they gonna have somewhere to go to, mm. you know, uh, 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 you know, believers that's that's on their last leg, that that's close to getting evicted, cause it's hard for them to keep up with paying their rent and bills. So right. where they gonna go? Right to a shelter. Mm. Cause I remember years ago, I wasn't even processing, and I was still confused, out of out of whack with what I was doing with my life still claiming Dr. York's teachings in the early 90s. And one that night I was in a mosque and them brothers was telling me, oh, well, we could send you to a shelter because <laughs> I can't take you to my place because I don't know you. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, hold up. I thought you, your trust was in Allah. I thought you feared nothing but Allah. You see what I'm saying? It's just the same thing like with them Christians. You know, they, they, they believe in Jesus, but yet they got all these... Uh, these bars up to their windows and doors. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? No, come on, man. Get, I mean, let's just let's let's just be real about this whole situation. You know, and, and then uh, you know, my thing is this: is that if you're not living up to their expectations and what they want you to do in the way that 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 they that they expect you to do it, then you ain't no use for them. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So they have a way to to uh, exclude you in, 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 a, in, a, in a way where you won't even notice. You know, or, or rather how can you say it, ostracize you. Yes, sir. Because I remember when I was writing my savings letter to get to Chicago when I was still in Kentucky, they I heard they usually write you back and tell you whether you whether they accepted it or not. But I had to get the news from the local minister of the study group. You see what I'm saying? To tell me that they didn't accept it. Why I had to get news from him instead of them sending the news straight to my address? Ain't that how protocol go? You see what I'm saying? So man, it, it's just a... <laughs> It's just a bunch of uh, bull crap, man. And, and I saw that, and I and and, and it, because of my experience of dealing with Doctor York and them, as far as that organization was concerned, I, I was able to pick up on the, the buffoonery quicker. You see what I'm saying? Because it wasn't something like I wasn't new to. You know, as far as the little games they play. You know, you got to fit a certain criteria. I even heard. I even heard this same minister tell me if you had like autism or some type of dis disability problem, Farrakhan, they wouldn't accept you in the ranks. <laughs> you know, that type of stuff. So, I mean, well, so, so I'm like, uh, so, so what is this, what is this supposed to be about? Just a certain type of 
certain kind of individuals or is this supposed to be about the whole group as a whole? You see what I'm saying? So, you know, all the questions started coming up at that point, like, okay, I've been hearing this, hearing it this way for a long time, but now I'm hearing it this way. So which way is it that they really actually doing it? Or like Talik said, you know, it's just about them using people. Mm -hmm. And that's just that simple. You know what I'm saying? So for me, that's the reason why I had to let all that stuff go, you know? Because, I mean, I'm not getting no benefit out of it. And, and I see a whole lot of other people ain't getting no benefit out of it. Mm -hmm. Just like during the years, I would go around the country and go to different mosques, you know, in and out of mosques and see how they was raising, uh, like this one year back in the uh, mid-90s, this was right after the first Million Man March. And I was in Buffalo, New York at the time, right? And, uh, they was raising the uh, the donation price for Farrakhan's gift that every mosque is supposed to send him every annually during Saber's Day. So uh, it's like <laughs> the, 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 it came up to 40 some thousand from my understanding. Mm -hmm. They was trying to raise it up another niche, you know, for every mosque. You know, they would send them, sometimes they would send them, like, I think, a million dollar present, wouldn't they? Or something like that? Or it was a hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I, yeah, I know, I know, I know it was uh, parts of Atlanta, uh, it totaled up to about 275000 80000 mm -hmm. something like that. So, yeah, it could have been millions. That's probably what they told us. You know, they it could have been millions. You know, they they. they they don't tell you everything, mm -hmm. right? Because if they if if they tell you everything, then it, then you can see what you're looking at. Cause soon somebody gonna ask, wait a minute, we giving you a million dollars. What are you doing with the million dollars? You just pocketing it? I exactly. thought we was building a nation. Exactly. <laughs> and then you got people in there, like I say, they I know brothers and sisters can't even pay their rent. Some of them get EBT cards. You Some know they get know. SSI. Some get uh, Social Security, uh, Medicaid, all that. You see what I'm saying? So we depending on all these different, uh, you know, entities for our sustenance. <laughs> but yet, you want us to give you all this donation so you could be nice uh, and plush and comfortable exactly. in your mansion in Chicago. You see what I'm saying? No, nah, man. And that's how, and, and you know, Dr. C, one thing I can say about Farrakhan, he's more, um, you know, uh, subtle with his stuff. You know, he's more smoother with it than Malachi York was. That's why Malachi York in prison for <laughs> 135 years in the Fed joint. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because he was more reckless with it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. What he was doing, you know? But Farrakhan is just a little more subtle with it. But people still recognize that got an open eye like us to really see what he's all about. And it's unfortunate that people that's still up under them teachings is it, it, so blind to the point where they can't see it. And you, you know? see, another, another thing, just to touch on that point right there, there's a lot of believers there that see it, but because they benefit from it, they go along with it. Mm -hmm. And then you have other you have other people, they don't have nothing else, bro. You know, you you you've been there 20 years, 30 years, yeah. 40 years. Or you've been there. I, I heard brother uh Andrew Snub know say this earlier. He said it took him 25 years. Yeah. It wasn't that it took him 25 years it's because he genuinely wanted to do something. So he was willing to overlook those things because the goal was to build a nation. Exactly. Don't mean that I wasn't a prisoner. It's just that it was a different time. Like how you said, brother, in the 80s, for the fish. Yeah. They had, it was a nation within a nation. So they know they could do it. 
So when a brother comes along that was dead and watched it happen, he just need the help because that's how it's appearing. So they willing to sacrifice the time away from their children, away from their wives. Uh, they they miss opportunities. There's some brothers, I met brothers, they could have went to school to be lawyers and mm -hmm. judges mm -hmm. and passed up grants to come and help the nation of Islam be only to be discouraged to not have a job at all and lose their family. Yes. Lose their home. Yeah. So that that's people that's people that's walking around right now that's asking for change, for something to eat. And a lot of times we don't even be knowing they was in a nation, <laughs> but their mind because they couldn't believe what happened to them. They it affected them. It's just that it affect us in a different type of way because we believe. And we had a, we had enough understanding to say, hey, it don't mean that the teachers won't work. It's just that it's the wrong person driving a car. Mm -hmm. You ever been in a car with somebody, and the, uh, uh, you want to go on a you you set to go to another town, and they say, hey, you know, uh, let me drive for a little bit so you can get some rest, but you can't go to sleep over there because they hitting the speed bump. Or they swerve and you're like, hey, man, everything okay? You can't even rest over there. <laughs> so the next stop, you say, hey, let me take the wheel again. You you get what I'm saying? Because they they don't they know where they're going, but they don't know how to they don't know how to get there with other people in the car. Farrakhan has never been a leader. No, nope. he's never been a teacher. Far Farrakhan is a preacher. He's a motivational speaker. Right. Speaker. He's a spokesman for something. He's never, Farrakhan never led, he spoke at a temple. It was the, it was the soldiers that built the temple. Mm -hmm. See, we focus, we, we always fall like that because we get, a, we're attracted to the glamour. We're attracted to the, to the, uh, the, the, uh, what you call it, uh, type of speech. The gift for gab. Yeah. It's the same, it's the same mentality with the preacher. The preacher can, you can go in church. We've all been to church. That preacher get up there and say, hi, uh, how you know? <laughs> do you hear me? That man had talked for 10 minutes and you don't know, he ain't said nothing, mm. but he just made you feel good. Mm -hmm. and, and because we've been in a stage, a lower state of mind of always dealing with depression, distress, pain, and suffering. When somebody say something and it sounds good and it feels good, we say a small part of us say to ourselves, why would they lie to me? We're on the plantation, but God's got our back. That's what that's how he talk. Farrakhan, I I, I don't get me wrong, I love Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that he stood up for his people. Yeah. But it ain't the Farrakhan. Uh I I I watched in tapes and interviews on a Di, Di, uh what is his name? Donahue show mm -hmm. or be on these talk shows. That ain't the same. When Farrakhan get on CNN and Farrakhan uh, get on certain newscasts and he beat up them them low educated, low no knowledge for some <laughs> people, that's Farrakhan all day. He going to handle you. But when them cameras go off mm -hmm. and we got to go back to Chicago, like how you said, brother, that's people on that's getting EBT cards. Yeah. That's people standing in the unemployment line. That's people looking for jobs. That's people that can't feed their families. That means he's no different than that preacher that collect two hundred dollars every Sunday, but and you sit in the fifteenth row and he don't even know your name. Mm. If he see you in the grocery store, he wouldn't even know you. Farrakhan don't know all his FOI soldiers. No. That's why when one of us died or <laughs> one of us go astray. He'll, he'll just symbolically speak on it. Well, you know, like how you said, brother, you know you felt bad. Yeah. Well, that's what they do because they get it from him. He teach them that. They'll say they'll say little little symbolic things when you don't come around. They say, well, you know the you know the believers is at the mosque, brother. You know we trying to build a nation, and Farrakhan can't do it by himself. And and he's used to people running out on him, and they they make it feel bad. They 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 try to. Support they try to uprise your guilty conscience mm -hmm. because they know you're a genuine brother. But when they can't use you and they can't abuse you, they'll make an example out of it. Mm -hmm. They'll come out and say, see, it's brothers. They won't say your name because if they say they, if they say your name and people come listen to you, common sense going to kick in. Exactly. Reality going to kick in. 
logic going to kick in. So they just, they'll just they just symbolically say, and they, you got brothers, they don't know Farrakhan. They ran out. They couldn't stand the test of time. Right. They couldn't hold the line. Mm-hmm. They couldn't do this. So when you go to talking, they looking at you like you a weak person. But the weak person is the person standing in the organization for 20 years <laughs> and you don't own the grocery store. Exactly. You still sell a bean pies. You don't even you won't even build a uh you won't even you won't even go to uh, Home Depot and buy a quarter quarter inch panels and, and three by eights and build you a newspaper stand to sell the Muhammad speech. Mm. You would rather put you would rather put a brother that's out there that's that's thirty years old. No. So it ain't nothing for a brother when a brother lead that in the organization. Hell, I used to drive trucks. My first my first gig, I had to feed my family. I had to drive trucks. I had to be away from my family, but at least I was feeding them. Mm-hmm. Hell, I was away from my family in the nation. We weren't building the goddamn thing. Exactly. All that left, left, right, about <laughs> face, turn, salute, and all that. That who was we fighting? Other black people. We right. weren't fighting no white people. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what make religion dangerous. And that's what the nation of Islam have become under the leadership of not only Farrakhan, but Wallace. Mm-hmm. Wallace started it. Religion is dangerous because it's only based on belief when it comes to us. But when it comes to white people, when you get when you go to the hospital, it's going to be a Shriners hospital. It's going to be a Catholic hospital. Mm-hmm. Or it's going to be called a Hope in Christ hospital. Mm-hmm. And that hospital benefits them people in that church. There's an elite group in all nationalities. That's why we get the blunt of it, because once we start making money, oh, man, look, if I'm not successful, why would I have all this? Now, the white man going to give you that. You know why? Because it's face on the paper. Exactly. So you ain't doing nothing. You ain't going for self like how y'all brothers doing with the Mississippi campaign. That's a that's a great idea. It's going to be hard to do. Because we are spread it out. Yeah. It just requires to make sacrifices. That's all. We just got to make sacrifices. It requires money. Ain't nobody going to help us do it. Mm-hmm. We sitting over here talking about logic. We sitting over here talking about common sense and reality. That's not where our people is at. That's people, that's people that's right now on the internet arguing if a man is a woman. <laughs> that's what they focus on. And then you'll get a person like Farrakhan that know that's wrong, that know a lot of this stuff is wrong. But you know what? He's a star. He's addicted to stardom. Yes. He's a microphone thing. Yeah. <laughs> so he can't he can't speak he can't speak against he can't speak against the GDs in Chicago. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and I'm I'm gonna be quiet because I've been going too long. The number one thing I started to notice, I used to be in the gang. I ran the streets. I looked up one day. I said, wait a minute. We can't stop the gangster disciples and the vice lords from terrorizing the community. How the hell are we going to stop the white man? He got a Navy, Army, right. and an Air Force. Yes. So we playing. This is dress up. This is what this is. When we was little, remember? We used to play house. I'm going to be the mommy. You, you be right. the daddy. I'm going to be the daddy. You be the uncle. We playing dress up. Mm-hmm. But in the real world, there's a real mommy and a real daddy. When they come and tell you, bring bring your butt in the house, <laughs> clean up and do your chores. Okay. When Farrakhan, when Farrakhan get ready to give a speech called Justice or Else, Farrakhan filled out the proper paperwork to assemble yeah. this group of soldiers to come and tell us. He didn't just go out to Washington, D.C. and tell them white folks, hey, we the nation of Islam. We the guardian of our people. The next time y'all do something, y'all going to hear from us. No, he filled out that paperwork 60 days prior mm-hmm. to, so that he could get permission. Exactly. Exactly. This, this, this subject here, man. This is going to have to be like a, a three, four, five, six parter because this, this is very deep. We have to cover a whole lot of ground. This this subject here, 
and religion, spirituality, and black scholarship, all of it has to be exposed. All of it has to be challenged. I'm going to say this. I'm going to turn the mic over to Brother Talib here. I want to I go back on some of the things that the brother was saying. Then I want to just add my little two cents and throw the mic to Brother Talib. Because uh, you had mentioned Dr. King. And they make mockery of Dr. King. They was talking about that non-violent non stuff. I don't do that. I turn the other cheek. And we don't turn the other cheek. We kick your ass. And I wish they would do something to me or whatever. Well, Malcolm, they did. 1962, yes, Malcolm, they did. Because Malcolm was one of the ones running his mouth. We don't turn the other cheek. You know, they, don't, they ain't going to do us like that. 1962, California. Those brothers got killed by the police there in California. 1962. See, this is the thing about when you run your mouth. When you run your mouth like that, you have to back it up. So they did. For some reason, I don't know why these folks think that white people are supposed to be scared of them. They're not scared of you. If it wasn't for them, you'd still be a slave. It was their internal war that took you out of the physical chain. Because we already know we screwed up. We still screwed up mentally. But it was their, their internal war that set you physically free. You didn't do it. You helped a little bit. You know, you joined the you joined the 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 uh, the the the, uh, the, the uh, north, but also you joined the south too. It was some slaves that fought for the uh, for the Confederacy. So you really was on both sides. You you didn't participate in nothing. Uh, you, 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 you sold that turnout, out any, any of the rebellion You sold your brothers and sisters out That tried to fight back You didn't join John Brown John Brown, I don't know what was on John Brown mind He's going to go get these arms He thought these slaves Was going to pick up these guns I would do it, what am I supposed to do with that gun John Brown and his whole family got all caught up He got hung Trying to help some slaves Then these Negroes Who ain't never even tried to do nothing like that Gonna talk about John Brown Cause he's a white man You ain't did nothing close to John Brown John Brown actually went Took over Armory Got the gun Let's do this And your ancestor said Hell no I ain't getting involved in all like that You know You don't want to get skint like Nat Turner They caught Nat Turner And, and skinned him alive You, you don't want to get caught up in like that So these Negroes They talking all this Make mockery of Dr. King Dr. King and his people actually face to face, hands on with the enemy. That's why they went to jail. Children went to jail. Children got beat. Children got bit by dogs. They actually took on the enemy. These black power folks did not do that. They stood in their suits like Malcolm did, run their mouth until 1962. The Woods killed those brothers. And, and Ronald X. Stokes, I believe it was, and Malcolm said he was close to Ronald, the secretary that was there, Ronald X. Stokes in California. That was that that hurt Malcolm when he when that man was murdered by the police in California. Now you talking all this stuff. Now what you gonna do? Elijah Muhammad gave the order, leave it alone, leave that alone, and you can go back because it's on YouTube. You can look how at Malcolm's face he had to sit. He had to sit there at that press conference. Well, our leader is so smart. Our leader is so intelligent. Our leader told us, leave, leave him alone, put it in the hands of Allah. That ain't what you said. You said, I don't turn the other cheek. You didn't say, well, if they do that to me, I'm going to put it in the hands of Allah. That ain't what y'all been running your mouth. You said, I don't play that. You put your hands on me. I'm not Dr. King. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You didn't do that. Your ass got, got murdered. You sit back. And you talk, put it in the hands of Allah. That's what Dr. King and his people was doing. Nonviolent protest. What is the opposite of nonviolent? You said that you're you're not into that nonviolent Dr. King stuff. Well, the opposite of nonviolence is violent. What do you do violent? Today, yesterday, or today? Because every time these black power folks get caught up with the police, what do you see them do? You see them put their hands behind their back, lay on the ground, and take their happy ass quietly to jail. 
That's what you see from these folks. But they're not like Dr. King and they talk, they try to make mockery of Dr. King and the civil rights movement like, the, like, they, like they better. You they ain't do nothing better. And, and if you do have a confrontation with the police, it's usually in self-defense. It's always, it's always in self-defense. You never, you never go after them. You don't attack no police station. You don't, you never attack the Klan. You, they never done none of that. You only do that in self-defense. You never go after the police. You never mess with these folks like that. But you're going to make Mark or Dr. King. For real. Or else Farrakhan, or else what? And then Farrakhan said, I need 10,000 brave men to do what? You got 10,000 so-called brave FRI probably among your own. What you need to go outside of your own people for to raise 10,000 men? Oh, you, I guess so. They can be stupid and go out here and get murdered following your dumb crap. Maybe that's the reason why. You don't want yours to be involved in doing something stupid. Because you should have 10,000 strong, brave, fearless men. That's what he said. I need 10,000 fearless men just to, 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 to do what? And Farrakhan, just like the brother said, Farrakhan is not stupid. He's going to go just so far and back his happy ass out. I don't know, brother, common sense, if you familiar back in the 80s or you heard the story. Back in the 80s, Farrakhan actually threatened this news reporter called, uh, named Milton Coleman. He made, I remember. Yeah, he I made. I read about it. Yeah, he. Well, I was yeah. there. Well, I was, that was my time, so I was there when all that was going down. And he made this threat. It was during the Jesse Jackson uh, campaign crap because Milton Coleman told folks a conversation that was supposed to be off the record, and Farrakhan was calling him a traitor and all this kind of stuff. And uh, now that was the eighties. If Farrakhan had did that right now, he would be facing charges of a terrorist threat. Hey, brother, you got a real bad, bad echo. Who? Oh, I do. When you speak, and it's yeah, you get a real bad echo. I don't know where it's coming from. I do not. Hey, hey. Yeah, I just started. It just started. It just started. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I hear you echoing real bad. Yeah, I hear even it too. I, even when I'm mute. I, I don't know why it's, it's, it's doing. It just started doing that. Let me see if I can figure out where it's coming from. Hey. Hey. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know why it's doing that. Hey, hey, hey. Testing, one, two. I don't know why it's doing that, man. I don't know. I don't know. It just all of a sudden started doing that. It just all of a sudden started doing that. I'm going to go out and come back in. We call, we call that the usual suspect. <laughs> yeah. Because it just, it just started doing that. I don't know what, what the deal is. I'm going to go out and come back in. I'm going to call back Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, brother, uh, common sense. Uh, yeah, I definitely concur with what you were saying, though, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You yeah, said, sir. Can, I, I, can I ask can you a I, question? You, you was a part of uh, the, the New Orleans, New York. Yeah, yeah, the New Orleans, Guam, Kibu, yeah. Yeah, when I was 18, uh, matter of fact, it was in the mid-'80s I joined that. And uh, when I got exposed to them teachings and pretty much I saw something was wrong subconsciously then. And I, I left up out of their living quarters. 
they had like a communal living quarters in each city. And uh, I left from up out of there because I wasn't in there with about two weeks, you know, and I saw how they was really running game and stuff. But subconsciously, it was a part of me that saw what was happening, but my heart was still with it because, you know, of course, I wasn't really questioning it like I should have, you know, like most didn't question it. But as time went on and I started realizing when I actually got myself in, I'm glad I didn't stay in the, inside what they used to call the community or the Holy Tabernacle of the Most High. You know, so when I left, I was one of those that was considered as an outsider. Like they say, when well, you turn your back on the law, you turn your back on Elyon and these other uh, fictitious characters that they name God by. You see what I'm saying? But uh, it was like, <laughs> I was glad I wasn't even in there after all them years. And I never went to that land down in Edgerton, Georgia, that uh, the feds had raided when they uh, brought down Dr. York. You know, I'm glad I didn't even see all that, especially with the rape allegations and all this other stuff they had going on down there. And <laughs> it was crazy, man. But uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I had, uh, you know, I was a part of that situation, man, and, uh, oh, he, he went out. What happened? Testing His one, two. Went out. One. It's still echoing on my side. It's still I'm going to bring him back. I'm going to bring him back. Oh, he back. Okay. Yeah, brother. But to your question, yeah. Yeah, I, I had, uh, I was in and, in, a, in and out of that. Well, you know, I wasn't actually considered a part of it at that point because I wasn't active inside it, but I was around them. me because I was, you know what I'm saying, um, I wasn't the one to invest too much money and time into that organization like that. Like I said, just looking at it from the outside at that point, you know, and then that's when I started, um, you know, drifting off trying to find out what uh, other organizations I wanted to be a part of that I might have seen that was more stabilized than that one, like the nation or even the more science temple or even, you, you know, I was even looking at, it was at a point, I was even looking at possibly even getting down with the 5% nation, you know, but I never did act on that effectively except for when I tried to progress, I mean, excuse me, process and the fair kinds organization. Oh, and there was another one too that was, um, an uh, offshoot of the nation. Uh, you ever heard of the United Nation of Islam out of Kansas City under that guy? Yes, sir, yes, yeah, yes, sir, I was actually sir. processing in his organization in the early 2000s when I was living in the Kansas City area. And I, oh man, yeah, 
they they was working people like a straight up Hebrew slave. You didn't get nothing. But 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 uh, uh, but, but some but some bean soup and salad and toast. That's all you got. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. And if you had to have money if you gonna eat good out there. What they had in Kansas City called your restaurant, you had to have your own money. And, and too many of the people didn't have that kind of money anyway. Yes, sir. Yes. And, and their quality of food wasn't about nothing neither, you know. So yeah, man, it, it was it was really crazy. But yeah, that organization when they named renamed it uh Bayou's Bayou's or Creative Bayou's or some stuff like that. They they uh ended up uh, going under investigation because one sister came out and sued them and actually got some of her money. While the feds was looking for uh, Solomon, because he he eventually ended up going on the run because he didn't want to pay that money that the courts uh you know ordered him to pay. But yeah, they was they was straight up sla- enslaving people in that organization. They wouldn't be you know like I said, whatever you got is what you got, <laughs> and that was that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I kind of and I kind of knew. A- I would say I kind of knew a couple of brothers that was under Silas. Solomon, you mean? Silas Muhammad? Oh, okay. I, I thought I was talking about Solomon. But yeah, I know about Silas Muhammad too. Yeah. The 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 closest uh I heard about I heard about Solomon because there was actually a sister that got an inheritance. And and she gave all her money to him. Yeah, and they and he pocketed it and didn't do nothing with it, and right. she and she was trying to sue him for it. Right. Yeah, yeah. They, he was a straight up con artist for real. He actually but said that, he was the, he was the uh, replacement of Master Far Muhammad. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Ever heard of you? Ever heard of Marvin Muhammad? Yeah, yeah, I heard. Oh man, that clown out of yeah, yeah, down the Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. 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 Muhammad, yeah. Muhammad say he he is a lie. He the one that came and talked Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, that's what makes that's what make religion dangerous. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. And he got followed. He got followers. He it's not a small of them. I think it's at least it's at least twenty seven hundred of them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm. Well, actually, I was I would when I was eighteen or nineteen years old, I went to uh, visit Marvin Muhammad down there in uh, Red Lake, Mississippi, and uh, and. Uh, before I continue, brothers, uh, this it seems like this is a, a stream yard problem. Something wrong with this uh, software or something like that. So we just gonna have to work through the echo thing. There's nothing, nothing I can do about it. But uh, yeah, I was uh, 18, 18 or 19 years old. I visited Marvin Muhammad, and we 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 already know about how wacky religion is. But the thing about Marvin Muhammad is that in Red Lake, Mississippi. He does, he does have his own groove going on. They just built a brand new school. They, he has a wonderful relationship with all his neighbors. If you part of that organization, whatever car, bean pies they make, you don't pay for nothing because everybody participate in building the school. Everybody participate in whatever they got going on there. You don't have to pay for nothing because you help build all of it. With Farrakhan, you don't get nothing. It's simple as you don't get. <laughs> That's right. You don't get nothing. I was with Farcon for nine years. Didn't even get get an ink pen. The only thing I got was some burnt up bean pies, and they wouldn't even let me sleep in the bed. I slept on pickle barrel. Perfectly good bed upstairs, and I actually was working for the temple because I didn't even have a job. My job was the temple. They wouldn't let me lay down in a bed in the mosque because I couldn't afford to pay the rent so I would camp out and sleep on top of pickle barrel down in the basement 
This is your brother's. This, this is your this is how you. <laughs> this is how your bro, brothers right. treat you, right? Brother, you're right. And I was 19, 18, 19 years old. old. Never really had a job in my life. Those brothers, a lot of them had businesses. A lot of them had good jobs. They never helped. They never helped the brothers that didn't have nothing. The only thing on their mind was trying to send as much money as they could to Farrakhan so they can get the so they could get the accolades. That's what it was about. But I say this. Going back to what Brother Common Sense was saying. He was talking about Farrakhan being the successor of Elijah Muhammad. And they always use that crap. Elijah Muhammad said, when you look at him, follow, follow Farrakhan. See, that's manipulation because actually what Elijah Muhammad was saying on that day was Farrakhan is the national representative and he's sickly he, he couldn't be going back and forth and up and down the road like that. So he's going to give whatever he has to offer to the people. I'm going to give it to Farrakhan. So, because he's the, the, my spokesman. So when you look at him, follow him. Whatever he said, go, go, because I'm the one that's guiding him. He's not, he did not say, after I'm gone, follow this cat. He never said that to those people that day. He's just a representative. He's just a representative. And whatever he said, tell you to do, and follow him, follow his lead, because I'm the one that's guiding him. And he's my representative. But they take that statement and twist it and manipulate it to, to try to say that Farrakhan is his successor, which that's not what he's, he never said that. Also, let's, let's say, for instance, that the man did mean that. Well, how the hell did Wallace end up being the leader then? You such a punk. You didn't fight for your position because you said if if Elijah Muhammad told you that that's your position, why didn't you fight for your position? You had to mess around, go through Wallace, and then end up doing your own thing later on, years later. This echo is starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> hey, brother, they, they, they just they interfere with the conversation. Yeah, well. Because that's like how you, maybe maybe there was certain uh, uh, words we used that disrupted the algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 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 common yeah. sense. Just like we're gonna use we using common sense. That disturbs the algorithm. That disturbs the algorithm. <laughs> Just by itself. <laughs> they they're using the word common like sense. You were saying that. <laughs> they're, us, they're using the word common like, sense too like, much. Like, 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 <laughs> go ahead, brother. Go this ahead. Not as a not delay in it. it. So go, go ahead, brother. Go you go ahead. ahead. Okay. I want. I want to. I want to. I, I mean, we're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna continue this conversation. We're gonna have to have a part two or three on this one because. And I don't want to. I don't want folks to think that we're just picking on the the nation of Islam. That's just where I come from. That's where you. All of us have it. All of us on this panel have an experience with the nation of Islam. So we're not just. We're not picking on the on the nation of Islam. I have a problem with all religion. I have a problem with. Spirituality, I have a problem with this black conscious scholarship stuff. I have a problem with all of it. it. Ain't just this one or that one. Because I learned that this mindset is holding us back. It's not making it's not allowing us to think properly so that we can move forward in a manner that we progress. Now for me. I want to say this before we get out of here. See, the thing about religion is this. For thousands of years, regardless to the religion, and I guess they want us to forget their history. Most of these religions, especially the big three, the, the, most, the most powerful ones are the, the biggest ones, 
They were born due to violence. They were born during to, to murder. There was a time when people like me, we were ostracized. We were ostracized. We was made mockery. We was even murdered. That's how religion has done throughout the year. These kings and these queens, these rulers, they were forced. They were forced their religion on the masses. And if you said something about it, they would kill you. In fact, even the story of Jesus is giving you the example because there was religion. These people already had their gods before there was a Jesus. And Jesus was interrupting their thing. What the hell you, what is this crap you bringing, man? And they end up killing Jesus. That's the, the, the modus operandi, as, they, as you say, of relig these religions. That's how they got so big. The reason why the majority of black people in this country are Christians is because that's what they, that's what we was given as slaves. That was forced on us. There was a time we didn't have religion at all. They did not give the, the slave religion. They did not allow us to read or write. And really, we were doing just fine with our religion. But the slave master began to understand that giving the slave a little bit of that religion, religion helped keep them under control. Because now, you won't be so rebellious because you're going to get your reward in the afterlife. So you would tolerate being a slave. You would tolerate the violence of slavery because you know you're going to get yours one day after you die. Religion, spirituality is a great control mechanism for rulers because you think that you're going to die and go to a better place while they enjoy the material wealth and the heaven on earth. Whether it's religion and I don't know, people think that there's a difference between spirituality and religion when there's not. The only difference between spirituality and religion is one is organized and one is ind individualized. Both of them talk about fantasy stuff, going out into the universe and, <laughs> and fairy tales and you, you never die. You're, gonna, you never you, you're just going to transform from energy to energy. All kinds of nonsense. <laughs> but it's time for these things to be exposed because they're detrimental to the health, the mental health of the human being because it puts us in a... We look at life in an unrealistic manner. And we, and they, they are correct. Melanated people are very spiritual. That's why you're getting your ass whooped. That's why you can't get. That's why you can't progress. That's why you can't. That's why you stay in your condition. Cause you, you spiritual and you religious. Instead of understanding, looking at the reality of our situation, using your brain to solve your problem, you think, you think that you're gonna. Some spook, demon, something gonna come out the sky, come help you, or there's a, or after you die, there's a a brand new life for you, which you cannot prove. It could actually be worse in the afterlife than it is here. It could actually be worse. You don't know because you've never been there. Nobody never been to to the to. To these spiritual realms or, or whatever, nobody never been there to come back and tell us how it is. It could actually be worse because things can get worse. Sometimes we look at our life; it can't get no worse. Actually, it can, and it has. I know in my life, I said to myself many times, like it can't get no worse than this. Oh, oh, yes, it can. It might not can get better real quick, but things damn sure can get worse. <laughs> it's hard as hell to get things to go good for you. But it really, it's really, it's easy for things to go bad. So that's all I'm gonna have to say. Cause I'm this, 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 this echoing thing. And we gonna have to, we gonna have to come back and. Uh,
and deal with this this conversation again. But uh, I'm gonna pass the mic but, uh, to, to brother uh, uh, common sense, and then the brother to live, and we gonna get out of here. Well, all I wanted to say was, uh, like I said, brother, I've been listening to you a long time, and I like I like the fact that you deal with reality. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to come on your platform and engage other brothers that deal with reality, live logic, yes, sir, and common sense. And I'm and, I'm, and, 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 and I know we're going to talk about religion, spirituality, and black scholarship. Yeah. So I can honestly say I think we covered religion. Uh huh. And the next time we meet, we should cover spirituality and black scholarship. Okay. Because the only way we're going to make progress. Is to come yeah, up with solutions. Solution. Exactly. exactly. Brother Talib. That's all. That's all. Hey, brother, uh, Common Sense, so you have a YouTube page called Is, you, is Common Sense? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go and look at that tonight. I'm going to go on YouTube and look at that. It's a podcast, right? Yes, sir. Yes, I, sir. Just, I, I just... I just uh, I was uh, telling uh, uh, the brother uh, Andrew Snow that, that I just I had just to start it back started over started because, because I went through I a period through where I was, where attacking, I was attacking, attacking the conscious community. community. Okay. And, and you, you know, know, they say they black, black power. power. And, and the white man is the enemy. Right. right. But when they but didn't when like they what I was saying, saying they ran they to the enemy. They ran to the enemy, <laughs> and all those videos got taken down. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> so, so now I got to start over. And Unbelievable. I can't, I can't go live, so I have to make videos, edit them, and upload. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, they, they, they took me down. And, uh, so so I, it's expected. Right. Wow. And, and uh, the, mes- the, the mes- message the message won't change. Yes, sir. I, I, like I, I remember I, I, I heard Angel Snub no say this. You can you, you can, can knock down a thousand pages. pages. I'll make I'll a thousand more. That's right. That's right. And here's the thing, brother. Here's the thing. <laughs> this is this is the thing. And, and, and even piggybacking off what Brother A. <laughs> Snuff Snuff said. These niggas, I mean, I'm going to just call it like it is, <laughs> you know, talk all this bull crap about the white man, how much he the devil and he the enemy and this and that. But nigga, why you ain't uh, going out your way like Snuff Snuff say to attack them? Mm-hmm. You ain't going to attacking these police (laughs) you know you ain't attacking none of these other folks not even the Aryan Nation the Ku Klux Klan I'm talking about showing up enemies that hate you you see what I'm saying (laughs) you ain't you ain't even you ain't going out your way to attack none of them (laughs) but you attack (laughs) another black organization or or somebody else black that don't agree with what you say or that don't agree with your theology your philosophy however you want to put it so here's my thing with that is why I cannot respect that period as far as that black conscious stuff I can't respect that I got more respect for what Dr. King did than mm-hmm. either one of them yes, sir. Yes, sir. at least they got legislation passed that was supposed to been for our protection as a as a as a group of people in this country. You see what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, they did way they did quite more than they than the nation did, than the more science did, yeah, than the Nuwabians did, than the Hebrew Israelites did. You see what I'm saying? They 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 wasn't just on no street corners talking it. They was out there moving, <laughs> making moves. Yeah. Like you, like you say, they was at it with the enemy. 
up front. <laughs> yeah, hands up. Ready to go to jail, yeah. willing to die, all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. wish, I wish we would have got a time to talk about the Moors, because. Oh man, get me started. Oh. With some <laughs> I got a, I got a fake ass. I got a fake ass cousin that's a part of that. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I, I already know, brother. I already know. It's been, no, hey, hey, no, but you have been, been gone since 29. Uh huh. Right. And they still and they trying to convince black people not to call themselves black. That's a loser. They lost. Nobody follows that philosophy. Right, exactly. I think it's StreamYard. StreamYard is tripping. Cause my Facebook, Facebook still looks good, like it didn't have no problem. We gonna get out of here. Quick story. Yeah. I, I used to follow his page. I remember when he first started. Right. When he started getting thousands of views, I used to believe that he was serious and he wanted to just teach the people in a right. righteous way. Right. I remember I made a, I, I did a cash app, a cash app comment. And I, I think it was like $5 or $2 or something. Mm-hmm. You, I've been on YouTube a long time, mm -hmm. and I was at a stage where you can you can change the amount to where a person can comment. Mm -hmm. When I tried to comment for two dollars, it wouldn't let me. I had to, I had to comment for four ninety nine and up. Hmm. That's when I knew then. I stopped. I stopped listening to him when I said when when he said it wasn't about the money. It was about the knowledge. Hmm. About the knowledge, <laughs> so you got to pay the listen to the knowledge, hmm. right? You basically, right. See, what you man. See, when I was when I was commenting and donating two dollars to him to, to comment, when he saw I kept commenting, yeah, he put a cap on it to where I had to donate four ninety nine and up to make a comment. <sighs> But that's how they all are. Yes. Damn. They, yes. They always start off with, I want to help black people. It's for black love. It's about the children. <laughs> but once they start getting money, that's all it's going to be about. Look at look at the brother, the young brother, young Pharaoh. Yeah. When young Pharaoh came to the community, he was where it wouldn't be. When he started getting money, he started wearing gold chains and gold rings. And buying cars and buying them a house and telling and telling his same followers to help him. Y'all niggas ain't on my level. What did Sarnetta do when he started getting money? He started showing you his gators, his alligator shoes cost five, six hundred dollars. He grabbed a BMW and a beach. What did Polite do? When he got that money. He said, forget the Negro community. Yeah, that's right. He moved to Beverly Hills. Sure did. Now it's answer to the floor of the state penitentiary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't matter. <laughs> but that's how they all start. Yeah. They, they, they always start off telling us, because it's like Brother uh, Angel Snuffin up said. They poverty pimps. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's feel good rhetoric. That's all it is. You mean to tell me? You mean to tell me all these major platforms? They got hundreds of thousands of followers, but they ain't bought a building. Right. They ain't bought a. They ain't bought two acres of land. But they can tell us their cars and their houses and their gators and, and, and show up. And, and the only person I can give credit to that not doing that was uh, Sarah Shinsetti. 
But the rest of them, they don't want to help our people, right? Like Angel right. Snub no said. I, 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 I was in the FOI. I guarded Farrakhan House and Hyde Park in Chicago, right off of, right off of 57 and Lake Shore Drive. Mm. I watched, I guarded that man's house. Yeah. While my wife, my my my, my one year old and new and my newborn child was at the house by himself. Mm. They all do that. Malachi's in York. He probably yeah. started off. He started off with good intent, but once that money come in and then women come in, yeah, that that's gonna always show who you really are. Exactly. Man, Malachi yeah. York was a gang leader. He was a gang leader in New York. He went to prison for 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 uh for raping a minor. Huh. So yeah, he, he was all he was always, you know, when I started studying his whole uh, situation far as his profile, after all the uh, you know, when 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 the bricks started falling and started crashing down, you know, I started realizing that he he even uh, adopted something from Elijah Muhammad by teaching that the white man was the devil. But see, a lot of people don't know he was he was part Portuguese. Huh. I think it was from his father. Huh. Something, yeah. He but you know, Malakazi. Yeah, Malakazi was in the nation of Islam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. And uh, you know, he he was, you know, he was on, he was on some, he was already on some some bull doo doo just from the start. So, and, and he and he reminded me quite a bit of Yahweh being Yahweh too, you know. <laughs> but you know, I think Yahweh being Yahweh was more ruthless. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. When you do the when you do the history the history of Yahweh when Yahweh, that was a mom. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> you talking about you talking about he actually bunch of people had their heads chopped off. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a brother that be on the sign at a time. And uh, I can't remember his name, but I read up on Y'all Been When Y'all Been. When y'all been. Mm -hmm. He was, like you said, he was ruthless. Yep. <laughs> he was like the Corleone family. Right, 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 right. <laughs> And if 